Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arun and in today's video we are going to discuss the architecture of an SAP ABAP system. First let's take a look at the high level architecture. On a high level you can divide the architecture of an SAP system into three layers. The first one is presentation layer where the users use channels like SAP logon pad, SAP business client, Fiori web browser or any mobile apps to access an SAP system. Then there is the application layer. This is where the ABAP or application server of an SAP system is located. The application server is the foundation of any SAP system. It is the engine that receives and processes all the requests and interacts with the database to retrieve the required information and send it back to the presentation layer. Then there is the database layer. This is where the database of a system is located. All software applications that follow the client-server model have these three layers as their basic architectural principle, and SAP systems are no exceptions here. Now let us get into the details of the components of an ABAP SAP system. An ABAP system consists of ABAP Server Central Services Instance, which in short is known as ASCS, and an Application Server Instance. An instance is an administrative unit that contains various components, for example, ASCS is an instance and the application server is another instance. An ABAP system has only one ASCS instance, but it can have multiple application server instances depending on the expected load on the SAP system. The ASCS and application server instance can be installed on the same host or they can be installed on separate hosts for high availability purposes. An ABAP system has a system identifier, also known as SID in short, and separate instance numbers. SIDs are usually three letter combinations of alphanumeric characters and instances are two letter numeric. For example, the SID or system identifier of an SAP system can be something like PE0 and the instance number of ASCS can be 00, whereas the instance numbers of the application servers can be 01, 02 or 03, depending on how many application servers are there. The SIDs and instance numbers are assigned during the installation of an SAP system. Now let us take a look at the components of SAP ABAP Server Central Services. The ASCS consists of a separate start service, a message server and an NQ server. The start service within the ASCS interacts with the start service that is located in the application service. It does that in order to keep track of the status of the application server within a particular SAP system. For example, let's assume an SAP system has three application servers. Each application server, when it is started, logs on to the ASCS first to advise its runtime state. So that the ASCS knows how many of the application servers are in on state and how many of them are in off state. Additionally, the ASCS contains a message server the message server enables the communication between individual application servers. It also distributes the load if there are multiple application servers available so that not all the requests are handed by just one application server. Then there is NQ server. NQ server is responsible for managing locks. It ensures that no two transactions or users are trying to update the same field in the same table at the same time, thus avoiding synchronization issues. So for example, if I'm editing a program that will update a table, the NQ server will lock that table and releases it back to the others once I have finished updating that particular table. So in a nutshell, the ASCS doesn't process any dialog requests. That means it doesn't do any calculations or retrieve data from the database or anything like that, but it acts as an administrative unit within the SAP system and manages the application service beneath it. Now let us talk about the components of an application server. An application server consists of components like ABAP Dispatcher, Gateway, Internet Communication Manager, Start Service and Work Processes. Let's take a look at these components one by one. First one is ABAP Dispatcher. The ABAP Dispatcher distributes the work to the work processes depending on the type of request that comes through. Then there is Gateway. The gateway enables the SAP system to communicate with other SAP and non-SAP systems with the help of RFC, which is called as a remote function called functionality, by using the TCP IP protocol. Then there is ICM. ICM is known as Internet Communication Manager. 
that handles HTTPS and SMTP type requests from the internet. So depending on the type of request, it is handled by either the ABAP dispatcher or the gateway or the ICM. For example, if the system receives requests from the SAP logon pad, then the ABAP dispatcher handles that particular request. If the request comes from a different SAP system through an RFC connection, then it will be handled by the gateway. And if the request comes from a webbed intro application or a web browser, then it will be handled by the Internet Communication Manager. Then there are work processes. Work processes are a bunch of programs that processes the different types of requests that, come to, that comes to the SAP system via the ABAP dispatcher. Different types of work processes are Dialog, Update, Batch, Print, and NQ. NQ. For example, if the request is a Dialog uh, request, then the ABAP dispatcher sends it to the Dialog work process and so on and so forth. Now let's take a look at these five different types of work processes in detail. The, the first one is Dialog. Dialog work processes deals with all requests that are executed by an active user or program or RFC and HTTP requests. Basically, Dialog work processes are involved when a request is processed in the front end by the SAP system. For each application server, you need to at least configure two Dialog work processes, but you can configure more if required. Then there is update work process. The update work process is used to update the database. For example, you make a calculation and you need to up update the database table with the result. The update work process takes care of the updating a particular field in a table in the database. You need to have at least one update work process in an application server. Then there is batch work process. Programs that can be executed in the background without user interaction are known as batch jobs. Time-consuming and resource-intensive calculations are sometimes configured to be run in the background so that it doesn't interrupt the real-time activities of the users in the front end. You need at least two batch work processes in an ABAP system, but you can configure more depending on the requirement. For example, if your company needs to run a lot of batch programs, then you might need more work processes for batch uh, work process. Then there is print. This work process processes and manages all the print requests. For example, the printing of work orders or purchase orders, etc., those kind of activities are managed by the print work process. Then the fifth and final one is the NQ work process. This work process handles the locks and unlocks of objects. As discussed before in the ASCS component, locks are an important part of an SAP system that ensures a table or an entry is not updated by two users at the same time. So if someone or, or some program is executing a transaction, then NQ work process will lock that particular table so that only one person or program can update it at any given time. This will avoid data inconsistencies in an SAP system. The lock mechanism is widely used by pretty much all the applications that have a need to update the databases, and not just SAP applications. And you need this work process in the application server only if you don't have an ASCS instance. Otherwise, the NQ server in the ASCS instance will take care of the NQ processes. So on a high level, this is the architecture of an SAP web system. I have posted this on my blog as well. I have provided the link in the description. Please check it out if you're interested. Also, please share this video with your friends or colleagues as they might find it useful. Subscribe to the video and thank you once again. See you soon in another video.